<clears throat> hey, hello there. Um, let's see if we can make a little bit of sense of what uh, got a little confused uh, today with. Okay, first off, the barometer. The barometer is mercury. It's been in a tube upside down. Uh, the tube is tall enough that the mercury flows down and we're left with a vacuum at the top. <clears throat> now, the average air pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch and it pushes in every direction. Now, as it pushes down, it pushes mercury up and to a height of 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, 14.7 pounds per square inch is also known as the atmosphere or the ATM. So we can talk about air pressure three different ways. One, the atmosphere, which is the average air pressure at sea level, the pounds per square inch um, that it's pushing, which is 14.7, and that it can hold up a column of mercury, 760 millimeters. So these three are all expressions of average air pressure at sea level. All right. Now, vapor pressure. Um, a manometer is a device that um, we can put a liquid in and it starts off with mercury in a U-tube that's attached to the device and the air pressure is pushing this way and this way the same so they're nice and level. When we put in a liquid, the liquid and close it, the liquid will start to evaporate it will eventually evaporate so much that it will fill up all the space that the air up here can hold. And once it has filled that up, for another one to go up and turn into gas, one of the gas molecules has to recondense. Now, when this occurs, we have a maximum pressure inside. Um, this is called a dynamic equilibrium because the rate of evaporating is the same rate of condensing. So we're getting change, but nothing really changes. Now, once that happens, we've increased the pressure, which has now pushed this over. And this height is the vapor pressure in millimeters of mercury. Okay. So this is another way that we can add to um, the uh, ways that we talk about air pressure. Okay, now, boiling. Um, this is water, water 20 degrees, has a vapor pressure of 17 and a half millimeters. Here it is at 40, 80, and 100. Now, average air pressure is 760, it's pushing down, on this cup of water at different temperatures. Now, as this stuff is evaporating, it's trying to form a bubble, but we have a problem. It, the bubble, the inside, it equals 17.5. The outside pushing down on it is 760. 760 destroys the bubble. Okay, at 40 degrees, the vapor pressure is 55.3. The bubble inside is 55.3. Again, the air pressure is so great, it just smashes the bubble. So we get evaporation, but we don't see any bubbles. At 80 degrees, <clears throat> the air pressure is 355. The vapor pressure is 355. Therefore, it's trying to make a bubble. The inside pressure is 355. Again, the greater outside air pressure destroys it. But at 100 degrees, the vapor pressure of water is 760. So the bubble has inside of it a pressure of 760. The outside air pressure is 760. Aha! This cannot collapse a bubble, and that's why when we boil water at 100 degrees Celsius, we get bubbles. Now, how can we boil water, sorry about that, at many different pressures and temperatures? Now, what's interesting is this is a graph of the vapor pressure of water at every 20 degrees Celsius. 
you will note that in order to boil at average air pressure, which is 760, the bubble has to have a pressure of 760. Just coincidentally, that occurs at 100 degrees of um, Celsius. So we can easily, and you're going to do this in the lab, um, boil water at any temperature. You're going to take water that's at about 40 degrees Celsius, maybe, yeah, about 40 degrees Celsius, and you're going to lower the pressure until the pressure above it is about there. And once the temperature and the vapor pressure and the air pressure are all on this line, it will go ahead and boil. So we can boil water at greater than 100. In the mountains, the air pressure is less, so the water boils at about 90. And this is pretty much the effect. Okay, so that was a little bit quick, six and a half minutes. Um, hopefully it cleared up um, the uh, presentation from today. And we will have a lab on Thursday to take care of this. Okay, dokie. Catch you later.